Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to my little video. Um, sorry those that were expecting Miss P, but you've got the tribute band today. Um, we're going to look at this little technique that I've thought of, shall we say, for putting images on acetate. I saw a video and somebody was doing reverse painting on the glass. And I thought to myself, how can I adapt that technique for use in junk journaling? And this is what I've come up with. It is a decoupaged image, copper paint, a stenciling, and it's on the actual rear side of the acetate. That's a piece of card that I put on so you can journal on it if you wanted to make that into a journaling card. Uh, is a larger one, which is an hydrangea. Again, it's got uh, stenciling in white, copper and uh, silver and purple paint on the back. Uh, and on that one, it's just in its raw state. Uh, so you could use that for decorating the front of a journal or just a decoration on a page. I've made these this size so you can see it being done. Obviously you can make it much smaller, you can make a little tag uh, and back it with card uh, for use as a, a dangle or a tag or a little journaling card. It's entirely up to you. Uh, so what we need to do then is to have a go and see what happens. What we're going to try and do today is replicate this one. Slightly different but basically that one which is an hydrangea, silver, purple, and some stenciling. It'd be, it'd be different just to mix it up a bit, but we'll have a go. Right, so the first thing we need to do is get some construction weight acetate. It's 300, uh, 400 microns. It's quite thick, as you can see. Uh, it just makes it easier. You can use thinner, but it's easier if it's a bit more body to it. Uh, and the technique really is you need to do exactly what you would do on a page, except do it in reverse. So whatever you would put down first goes on last, and whatever you do last, say stenciling, goes first, because we're building it up from the front backwards, as it were. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some stenciling on. Uh, if you bear with me, because I've forgotten to get my stencil. Good start, he says. This is the stencil I'm going to be using today. Uh, it's actually one for uh, stenciling the outside of a cake, which is why it's in the round like that. You have to end up with that pattern on your cake. But I'm going to be using this, and I'm just going to put some in the corner, uh, as you can see on this one, uh, just in each corner, turned round so that the it bends the opposite way. Um, but on this one, I'm going to try it in black. I'm going to see what it looks like in black. So that's what we're going to do first, is the stenciling. Uh, this video will be paused on occasion because there's a certain amount of drying time because you have to let each layer dry before you can build it up. We'll get a... Uh, this is black, but it's um, Americana Deco Art and it's a soft black, so it's not quite as harsh as the darkest blacks. Oh, it's got a sort of a purple, purpley brown. You probably won't be able to pick that up, but it's it's not deep black, which I like. Uh, what I need to do is get a piece of paper. Again, I forgot to get a piece of paper. As you can see, I'm well organised for this. Uh, I'm just going to put that behind it so I can actually see where it is because obviously being transparent it makes it quite hard to see and hard for you to see. Uh, and I'm going to do some in the corner. Uh, I'm going to put that one in that bottom corner there. And I'm not after the boldest of stencils. I, I don't mind if there's a little bit missing here and there got a sponge dabber, just loaded it up and I'm just going to dab that on. Uh, obviously being on acetate, if you make any mistakes, it's easy to wipe it off at this stage because it is purely acrylic paint onto acetate uh, and 
for those who are thinking will that stick yes it will because acrylic paint really is no different from your acrylic glues it does stick to things and there we go that's that one in there uh, we're going to use the same one um, but put it over this side uh, that way on I think um, but I'm not going to use the, all of that part of the stencil on each one I'm going to sort of take it off the page a little uh, so we get a little bit of variation we don't want it all looking the same on each corner we don't want to frame it we just want to enhance it well I think it's looking nice uh, and then what we're going to do is because we want to turn that over and come from the other side we're going to use uh, the other end of it I think uh, so we're going to turn that around make it easier for myself and we're going to put that one that's the same way get it the right way that's the same way so it must be <laughs> Bear with, bear with. That way, I think probably. Problem with it. upside down, left to right today. No sense of direction. Obviously you can use any sort of techniques you like on this, you don't have to stencil. You could use your acrylic Posca paints or any other sort of acrylic paints or pens uh, and draw something on, trace something on. There we go. And same bit around the other side. This is just one of many, many interpretations that you could do of this technique uh, it's the same way I got it the right way around again that's the one and this time I think we'll just go nearly right off I think just to there just get enough paint out of there I think just go in a little lap. It's because the paint's going a little dry and it's getting a little tacky that it's just lifting slightly but I think we'll be all right. There we go. So that's the stenciling part. That was relatively easy wasn't it? Um, so I'll just pause you there for a second while I rinse my stencil off so it doesn't dry. I'll be with you back soon. drying up do we? It's still recording. <laughs> it's not pausing. I don't know why that's not pausing but it isn't pausing for me. Nope I'll just have to keep going because it's not going to pause. Uh, Miss P is going to go and wash that stencil for me and my stencil dabber uh, right so that's the stencil done sorry about that for some reason the me, uh, me little keyboard seems to have died uh, that I use for remote pausing uh, right so that's that so the next thing we need to do is is to get a, uh, a piece of decoupage that we're going to put on the back now I think one of the best things to use for this is, is either tea bag paper perhaps or in this instance I've got some uh, rice paper and what I've done is I found an image on Pixabay of a hydrangea 
Uh, I've printed it out on uh, rice paper and then what I've done is if by magic is fussy cut it. So that's the image printed on rice paper. I did it on a laser uh, because I have one uh, which means it's more permanent instantly but if you were to do it on an inkjet I'm sure if you left it overnight it would work just as well. So there we have is that hydrangea image on uh, rice paper and fussy cut. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is give it some colour. Uh, as you see on that one we had a, a sort of a lilac-y colour with a slightly darker blue uh, middle. This time I'm going to use a slightly different colour. I'm going to go for a, a lighter blue. This is a denim blue. Uh, that's the approximate colour on the end. These are Winsor & Newton Pro markers. They're alcohol markers. Uh, I find they work perfectly on rice paper um, because the, it sinks in, spreads out, but doesn't leave any lines. Uh, if you were to use some of the cheaper ones, the pigment can come out a bit blurred and lined. But with the Pro markers, you tend to get a good finish every time. So what I'm going to do is pop, pop that underneath. I've got a glass board underneath because it's going to go straight through this rice paper, probably straight through this paper and onto the board. And I don't want to mess up Miss P's table or I'll be in so much trouble. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're not going to be fussy about it. We're just going to cover all of those in with the light blue, the denim blue. Uh, so we just can go all over. See, you don't have to colour each one in, you just colour them all the same, just go over. You could do it in multiple different colours if you were so inclined, uh, but I think this will work fine for what we want to do uh, without boring you for hours and hours. Uh, there is a part there which possibly would be daylight, but we'll fill it in anyway because I don't think it really matters. I don't think anybody's going to be able to tell. I'm using the nice broad chisel tip on this so I can get, get lots of ink down quick. Uh, it tends not to bleed too far sideways, uh, so you can sort of go quite close into the ends of these. Uh, and if you watch it closely, it does go sideways slightly, but it doesn't bleed across too far. So what I'm going to do is go as close to the edge without sort of going over like so uh, and then what I can do is turn it round put the top back on on the chisel tip uh, and on the other end is a fine point uh, which means then I can go into those areas and put down less ink uh, and just take it up to the edge without going over uh, so it's the lightest of touch and it'll just fill in those areas just to take it to the edge, edge of the black without sort of going over too much. Just sort of wicks itself across. Uh, and there we go, that's the blue done. That was easy, wasn't it? There you go, it's the blue. Nice even coat, that's uh, st still damp, so it will evaporate quite quick being alcohol pens. Uh, and then we're going to use this uh, amethyst uh, for the darker centres. I'll check if it's dark enough. It's not. We'll uh, we can find another one. So what we're going to do is find the centres of the flowers. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten uh, that we need to do. And we're going to use the fine point again because we don't want too much, but we do want to darken them centres and just bring it out slightly from the center. Uh, so the, if we sort of start from the center and sort of flick outwards, it sort of makes it, you don't really want sort of a, a pure circle in the middle. Um, you want it to look slightly more naturalistic. Can you see that purple there now in the center of there? really sort of brings the middle of those flowers to life. Uh, so again, go to the middle, flick outwards and let it sort of 
wick where it wants to wick. It doesn't take long, does it, really, to create something? I'm sure anybody's capable of doing this. Well, I know if, if I can do it, then generally most of the people are more than capable. Just using the fine tip, flicking out from the centre. And of course all the time we're doing this that stencil's drying so that's a good thing. There we go, flicking out, flicking out. worth taking the time just to do these little things just adds the adds another level to it uh, there we go so let's see if we can get a more white bit of paper so you can probably see a bit better can you see there now that they've got those darker centers it really sort of brings them to life and all we've used is two pro markers alcohol markers uh, colored them in and put some darker centers on them uh, now we need to sort of address this uh, leafage and that stem there, which I'll need a brown for later. Um, but we're going to use a, another pro marker. This one's called Forest Green, appropriately enough. Uh, and we're just going to use the, the big tippy end again uh, and just fill that in. I'm leaving some bits, sort of trying to fill it in in the direction that the, the shading is already on the image. Because uh, what we'll do, we'll come back in with a lighter colour and just fill in any areas that are left, um, just to give it some bit of interest. But it really doesn't matter, you can colour it all in one colour. quick and easy there we go that's quick and easy and I've got a lighter green this one is uh, apple green uh, which you can use that fine tip and just put some lighter edges in just on those bits that are near the edge you have to excuse me head if it gets in the way it's hard to do things when you're kind of remote from them uh, if you go into because that they're both alcohol markers where you go over the the darker green the the two will, will bleed together uh, so it doesn't look sort of patchy um, but it just brings a different little bit of light to it just in those spots that uh, we've deliberately missed Use the alcohol in the, the lighter marker just to drag some lines down and just make it more slightly more interesting. Uh, there we go, you see that it's got some shading, not lots, but uh, just gives it a little more interest. Uh, and we just need a little bit of brown uh, on that stem. I'm not bothered particularly which brown or putting any shade on that. This is a sort of terracotta. We'll see what that looks like. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. 
So there we go, that's stage two. So we've got our image from Pixabay printed on rice paper, fussy cut out, and now coloured in with Pro Markers, alcohol markers. Uh, so we're going to leave that to dry, uh, and hopefully by the time that's dried, the stencil image dried, and we can bring the two together. Now what I'm also going to do is a bit of a wild card project, one that I've never tried before, to see if some various techniques work. They may not, they may do, but we'll have some fun along the way, I'm sure. Uh, and this one is, is slightly more, shall we say, darker. This is more of your not pretty. I'm trying to find another piece of paper so I can show them here, because otherwise they just don't show up. Let me find a piece of paper. Because if you don't have anything behind it, you just won't get the full benefit of it all. There we go, there's a piece of paper. So what we're doing, we're going a bit on the dark side this time. We've got a skull with a crown and a skull of some ram. So what we're going to do is a sort of dark gothic type uh, image, I suppose you would call it. Uh, and to do that, the first thing you're going to do is do something that I haven't done before and I hope it works is I want those images which will be placed on the back of the acetate uh, in such a manner that it looks like that horns are coming out the top of that crown something similar to that uh, and obviously that will be that will be what you see from the front but what I want to try and do is put some uh, gold leaf where those horns are on the lighter parts of the horn so the light's catching them uh, and on his crown uh, because we're doing it in reverse of course what we need to try and do is get the gold leaf onto the acetate first before we decoupage those images on so what i need to do then is that's effectively going to be we're working from the back, and that's the back. Uh, so what we're going to do is put those images down first, like yay. Uh, and when we need to put some size for the metal leaf on this back side. Uh, what I'm going to do to help me is get a light box so that I can see the image more clearly, uh, so I can actually really make out where his crown is. So I'm going to do that. I've got a little light box here. So we're going to place our images approximately where we want them, uh, which is going to be something like that, something like that I think, um, but more in the middle. So we're going to put that one down first, put that one over the top, approximately where we want it put our acetate over. That's going to be near enough I think. Uh, and then turn our light box on and you can now see that we can see the image underneath and it's underneath the acetate. So we're going to put the size on the reverse of the acetate and the image is temporarily on the other side so we can see where we need to put it. Because once we've gold leafed this side then images are going to come out from underneath and go on top in exactly the same place hopefully. So what we need to do is we've got some uh, metallic gilding flakes there for later uh, and we have our metal leaf size. Uh, it's different from your normal glues. It's specific for gold leaf. Uh, what you do is you put it on, it's sort of a, a, a creamy colour and then as it dries it goes clear but it remains tacky. That's the secret. Once it's dry, it's still tacky. Then you put your gold leaf on, rub it in, 
it'll only stick where the stickiness was and then you should be good to go but it remains sticky forever until there's something placed upon it so we're going to give that a bit of a shake attempt to get the top off because it hasn't been off for a while and it tends to glue itself on there we go Uh, we're going to put a bit in the top. It's just a touch. We don't need masses. Uh, we're not, not gold leaf in Canterbury Cathedral or anything. Uh, and then what I've got is a, a, a rough brush. I don't need anything posh for this because it might get stuck up and it may end up in the bin if I'm not quick about it. And then what we're going to do is to put some of the size on the brush uh, and then just brush it in in sort of kind of the areas where we want it. It's going to acetate remember so it's 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 you can't be too precise about it um, because it wants to sort of bead back up uh, but if you patient, you can probably get some roughly where you want it. I mean, I don't want a complete covering anyway, uh, so if it beads up slightly, that's fine. As I say, I've never tried this before. It's a bit of a wild card. Um, while we've got drying time, I thought we might as well have a have a go at something. See, that's too much on there, and it's beading up beading up a bit but that's fine there we go and we want a bit on his crown again I'm not fussed that it's complete just somewhere where the light might fall and catch it can you tell I'm holding my breath here And there we go, and we'll come back to that in a bit uh, and see uh, whether we can apply any gold leaf or not. And then we've got the fun of trying to get the images on top of it uh, once the gold leaf's on in roughly the right place. So it'll be interesting to see whether this works. It's a bit of a wild card, but why not? Uh, so there we go. So we're going to have to put that to one side now again, let that dry. Um, by which time the other things will hopefully be dry so I'll just pause you there and I'll be back shortly well welcome back that was a short break there just while the uh, the things dried uh, the first one that was dried is the stenciling because it's only a very thin layer of acrylic paint and the alcohol markers dried quite quick I did give it a quick blast over, but I think it was probably dry anyway. Uh, so what we need to do now is to decoupage that to our acetate. So the first thing you need to do is just check that you're on the right side. You can feel the rough paint that side and it smooth that. So we're always working on the back, uh, which is obviously the side the paint's on. Uh, and we need to be able to see that from the other side. So we need to put it down that way. So whereas normally you might uh, decoupage them in down that way, we need to put the, we're going to use matte medium, but the decoupage gel on this side and then put it down. Uh, so that's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to use in this case matte medium, uh, which is a Windsor & Newton Galleria. It's um, it's not dissimilar to, to decoupage gel, it's just a bit more runny uh, and we have some, so we're going to use it. Uh, so what we're going to do is bring that over to there, and I'm going to take the top off of this. Uh, I'm going to shake it up first. Not because it needs shaking up, but I need some on the lid to make it easier to get to. You can see there's some in the bottom of the lid there, which just makes it easier. Uh, and I'm just going to put a layer of the matte medium over the proper side of the image. Uh, 
being rice paper it makes it slightly more robust and easy to handle um, obviously you could decoupage napkins onto it um, you may want to just put that on and let it soak through from the back uh, because I'm using rice paper I'm putting it on the side that I need to stick down um, because it doesn't wick through is not as absorbent as uh, say tissue paper or a napkin so there we go and I'm going to just put that down where we want it which is going to be somewhere I would imagine like that put that down dibbly dubbly uh, and now that we have it in place uh, let's have a look what it looks like from that side ah, I think that's uh, that's looking okay uh, we're going to put some more on that back now and give it a good soak in uh, so that it does adhere uh, to the acetate uh, there'll be more things going on top of it um, so it will definitely be held in place um, but we'll just put a bit of that on let it soak through uh, and then let that dry again another drying pose there's Bob having a shout at somebody she's using a tiny brush working out from the center oh. apparently there's a wasp in here so that loud bang on top of the microphone was Miss P having an argument with it <laughs> so for, sorry for all you people out there that have suddenly become deaf I'll just get this on, I'll pause it and then I'll get rid of the wasp uh, and then we can all get back to normality. Gone. Oh it's gone, she's done well, she's opened the window. I think it flew out holding its ears. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't matter if you come over the edge um, because it, it'll all just add to the the glory of it when we put the paint on next. There we go, let's just put some on there. It just seems reluctant to stick down at that point. But it'll all be grand, I'm sure. There we go, so that's that decoupage on, that's the next step. And now I need to leave that to dry uh, and to fully dry uh, so that we can then move on. Um, so we can put that to one side. I'll just check on the state of the size. Uh, well, it's gone, yeah, I think that's gone fairly transparent, so Maybe we can move on to that. I'll just put that to one side, let that dry. Uh, I'll uh, just get Miss P to rinse me brush out. It's good, great having an assistant, you know. Uh, so what we need to do is, to, that's the size, it's, it's dried, which means it'll be very tacky. Uh, so then I'm gonna get some gilding flakes, put them on, and hopefully we can, uh, make it stick in the right place as i say this is a a first time a wild card on the fly don't know if it's going to work but we're going to give it a go uh, i'm going to put some flake over there a bit of flake over there i mean it may very well just stick to the acetate and be a right pain but we'll see you never know, dear. Life's full of little surprises. With the uh, gold leaf and the uh, skulls and stuff, it's... Uh, bit of a mixture, but you know, why not? Why not give it a go? I 
think that's uh, covered everywhere that we put the size on uh, so then we need to get a scrubby brush uh, and see whether it's going to come off let me get a scrubby brush that one might do right let's see if it's going to any of this is going to come off oh look oh look There's a possibility that it's actually stuck where it's supposed to stick. I'll just brush this to one side, put it back in the pot because it's perfectly usable, because it's only stuck where the size is. Let's put that back in its pot for another time. It's very lightweight this, if you sneeze or breathe it goes everywhere. rescue as much of it as we can and then we'll just uh, we're all staticated up static electricity is getting the better of me come on don't be so silly get in the pot that'll do right so get rid of these bits put them on the floor why not Put them in the bin. Get a piece of tissue because it's decided it's going to. Where is it? It's in, the, it's in the drawer that says William Morris. Ah, I think uh, Miss P's got an anti static bag somewhere which we may need to resort to. Purple. Uh -huh. There we go. We'll give that little dust in and see whether we can get it to stop being a nuisance. Look at that, as if by magic. De static electricity fide. There we go, that's better. Excellent idea, Miss P. Thank you very much. Use your anti-static bag. From Fancy Nancy. From Fancy Nancy. Nancy was kind enough to uh, send Miss P the anti-static bag and we're all grateful. There we go. Look at that. Doesn't that look like absolutely nothing? <laughs> so let's bring back our uh, skull and horns and see whether we can place them on in a rough manner. It's going to go something like that, I believe. That's going to go in a rough manner like that. That's me approximation. I'm going to get another spare piece of acetate and just pop it oh, look, ee, on top, just so we can perhaps turn it over and have a look how successful or not that looks. Yeah, we're not quite lined up there, but I think you get the wow. general, you get the general gist, people. That's worked um, better than I thought. So the next thing we need to do is to uh, decoupage those onto there. for which I think we'll bring back the light box because that should enable us to see where the gold leaf is easier so that when we line them up we can probably line them up slightly more accurately uh, than we were though I think it's probably not, not too bad probably get my head in the way again but you've got to line it up haven't you yeah, see, so look, if we can get that there, I'd be more than happy. I'd be ecstatic. I'd be three and a half out of five on the excitement level. There we go. That's going to what it's going to be. So what we need to do is... Uh, mm, because we're going on the acetate, 
it's not going to go through so we can decoupage hopefully directly above our light box there's bob off on one again uh, let me get the brush this piece has got a lot of washing to do today with the brushes but what can you do bob enough people don't want to hear you barking Uh, we're going to have got our lid of uh, decoupage gel put there uh, and we're going to do the front of that one i'm going to put it on a piece of paper get rid of that one give that a little bit of a scooching over give it some chance of sticking this is the, probably the most trickiest bit, I would imagine, getting this up and down in one piece without it all curling and messing and oh lordy, it's going everywhere. If you just stay there for a second, that's fine. Just behave yourself. Just because you're all horny. Oh, there's a bit we're going to have to put on after. Right, oh lordy, 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 lordy. So, I'm not sure this is going to work. I've got it all stuck to me fingers. Come on. You're not that sticky normally. Thank you, behave. Come on, there's no need. That's all at an angle. Hold your breath, people. Ooh. Ooh. I'm sure there's a much easier way of doing this, but I just don't know what it is at this second in time. So don't panic. There we go, I think. There's, there we go, there we go, there we go. That's getting close now. Ooh. She keeps going about my head, but I've got to see where it's critical stage. time be more sensible about it let's see what that looks like that's not too bad is it Does that look too bad what do you think miss p looks great looks wow looks wow what i'm gonna do this time is because i'm not really bothered about this background because it's going to be add more stuff on it is i'm going to put some decoupage gel around that area and stick it on top of that I think is possibly the way forward but time will tell right how much do we need a bit more give it plenty too much is better than too little I'd say right so Theory, we're going to plonk that about there. See, that was much easier. Why didn't I just do that in the first place? Instead of messing. Right, how we're looking? We're looking sort of gold Perfect. crowny, maybe. As I say, this is a trial and never been done before, so we're, we're sort of in the lap of the gods. this we come to another tricky step that I've never done before so again that's going to be incredibly interesting to see that as any chance of working but you know
There we go. So what I'm going to have to do there, let's have a look, see what it's looking like. Ah, it's not too bad. Could be worse, could be better. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to leave that to dry now. Um, and we'll be back to you as soon as the decoupage on both pieces has dried. So please bear with. I'll be back in two seconds in your time. Welcome back. That didn't take too long, did it? Right, so the next stage in our uh, gothic cum scully type journaling card that we're going to be doing. Uh, the next stage is to get your pickled cockles out. No, that's not true. Uh, I, I've got some crackle paste that I decanted into this jar. I'm assuming I did because I wrote crackle on the side. Uh, it could be could be vinegar, but it could be crackle paste. What I intend doing is using the crackle paste to cover the back of there, not necessarily where the decoupage is because I don't want that to crackle too much, um, but to put a layer of crackle paste over the open areas on that one. Then let it dry and then see if it crackles. It may not do it. I don't know. Again, it's a wild card test. Uh, I just thought it might be quite nice if we crackle paste it, put the paint over and see whether it crackles. What you would do normally, of course, with crackle paste is you'd have a painted layer. Uh, then you'd put the crackle paste on and then you put another paint over the top uh, so the underneath layer shows through the crackles. Because we're working in reverse, uh, of course, we crackle the top layer and see the behind, which is on the top, if you see what I mean. <laughs> you get the drift. Uh, and because we're doing that, we don't need any paint layer there first. Uh, we just put the crackle paste on, put a layer of paint, crackle it, and then put another layer of paint on the top of that, which will show through from the other side. That's the theory. I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if this crackle paste is crackle paste or vinegar. If it's vinegar, it looks quite gloopy. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, there'll again be more waiting time, obviously, as there is with this one. There's actually more waiting time than there is actually doing. Uh, and we're just going to give a finish layer, comprehensive layer of crackle paste over pretty much most of it, but not necessarily too much over the decoupage. I don't think the crackle paste would pull the decoupage apart, um, but I don't want to take that risk particularly. There we go. Uh, there'll be some beading on this, I would imagine. It'll probably take a while to dry because, of course, we're on acetate, so there's no uh, absorbency. None of it's disappearing into anything. It's purely sitting on top. Um, but because each layer, layer is basically acrylic based, um, they are all going to adhere to each other and adhere to the acetate underneath. That's my theory. You may have your own. You may all be sitting there thinking, what is going on here today? I often think that. Story of my life. There we go. I think that's probably sufficient. You know, it's a trial piece. You know, we're not expecting perfection. But it would be nice if we got anywhere close. There we go. So that's the crackle paste on there. I'll put that to one side now. Uh, and then I'll wash my brush out. Uh, I'll just ease that off that paper. Because uh, I don't want it sticking to the paper particularly. Though again, because it's acetate, of course, anything that does get on the other side, paint or whatever, will readily come off with a wet wipe or a good nice dry cloth should remove any paint that's got onto the other side through th due to my incompetence shall we say right so the next thing we're going to do is we're back to do, 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 this one uh, which is also dry now uh, you will notice that some of the decoupage is a little bit there. It doesn't quite, can you see a little bit there yet? Uh, it hasn't quite stuck, but it doesn't matter at this point because there's stuff going over the top, which will 
bung it back down again. Uh, so the next thing we need to do, if we look at our original one, uh, as you can see that's got white stenciling uh, and a different coloured flower. Obviously we're, we're looking at the other side, Ooh, there we go. Uh, it's as a, kind of similar I guess. Uh, I quite like that colour and I quite like that colour. Um, but they complement each other very nicely. Um, but the next stage is uh, the purple. Uh, the silver, as you can see on the back, is the last thing to go on. Um, so we need to sponge uh, some purple, only in this case it will be blue, not purple, because the purple matches that, uh, and ours is of a more bluey tone. So we're going to use blue paint sponged lightly to give us these marks around there. So if you bear with me I'll just go and get my sponge and the blue paint. Uh, I won't pause you because it'll only be 30 seconds at tops. Got me sponge. I don't know what happened to me saucer. I used it earlier. That's what happened to me saucer. Still alive. And this PB and all efficient and washing me saucer. That's very kind of it. Uh, right. Oh, blue paint. Now, where did I put the blue paint? Oh, it's a nightmare. Bear with people. I've got a coffee here as well. I'm going to have a slip of coffee. There's the blue paint. In this instance, it is uh, Jacquard Luminaire Light Body Metallic Acrylic in a pearlescent blue. So it's got a nice sheen to it, nice pearlescence, uh, and it should be perfect for this job. And thanks to Susan Hall. Uh, and, uh, and thank you to Susan Hall, which I do believe uh, gifted this to Miss P. And by association to me. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're just going to get a little bit of that out onto my saucer. Ooh, thick and gloopy. Let's get a bit. We don't need too much again. We're not. We're not putting. Ooh, that's a lot. We're not putting loads on. Uh, but we do want sufficient. Uh, what I've got here is a piece of natural sponge. Uh, the natural ones tend to have more irregular holes um, than the man-made version. That has plenty of big holes, but the natural sponge tends to have a more even spread. Uh, so what I want to do is to just pick up some of that paint across various areas of that sponge dab it off uh, as where there's too much and then just have a go at it and see where we're at. Keep rotating your sponge so you don't get too much all in one place. See even that just that bit there is probably sufficient for our needs uh, but the thing to do is to turn it over because whilst that may look like a lot some of it of course is is the other side of the stencil so you won't actually see it so it may not be quite as much as you might first think Ooh. Let's have a look. You can see I don't want to put it down but you can see uh, that is probably sufficient I would say what would you say Miss P? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's just a random smattering of that blue pearlescent uh, and it used very very little uh, so again we just need to wait for that to dry uh, I might just do a little bit more dibby dab there I think just because I can't help myself uh, and I'll go and rinse this off we'll let that dry and I'll get back to you very soon um, when the crackle paste is dry and when this is dry. So it won't be long in your time, maybe a while in mine. Ooh, 
Welcome back again. See, that wasn't too long, was it? Uh, right, that um, blue now is dried on there. Uh, it's looking quite nice against the white. Um, but what really brings all this to life is our final coat. Um, a bit like, I suppose, if you when you start out the other way, you start out with a relatively plain bit of paper, and it doesn't really make sense till you've added all the things on top. Well, it's exactly the same theory in reverse. It doesn't really make sense until you get down to the last layer. Um, so what we need to do is to turn that over, because that's the right side, that's the smooth, and this is where it's all happening on the back. Uh, and what we're going to do is a very similar thing as we did on this one. I'm going to use some silver paint uh, just to bring it all to life. Uh, it's the same make and manufacture of paint as the blue. It's Luminaire Jacquard Metallic Silver. Uh, and what I'm going to do is to sponge that on. Um, and there's a good reason for that. One is that we don't want any lines to spoil the look. But also if you sponge it on, it does leave some voids and gaps, um, which gives it more interest. That's my theory. Uh, so we turn that over. Yes, we turn that over. I'm going to get some silver out and to our plate again. Oh, this is more runny than the blue was. Uh, again, need enough, but not too much. I can always get a bit more out later. Uh, that may not be enough, actually. I'm going to give it a bit more because we need a reasonably good coat. Uh, and this is going on all of it. This is going totally booch, all over. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, you don't have to make them this size. I'm just doing this size so you can see the sort of process more clearly. Um, but it could even be a small little keyring size tag or a journaling card. Um, on the ones that I had before that I had subsequently put away somewhere. Uh, here we go. Uh, these ones, the little train boy. I uh, backed in some cream cards so you can use that as a journaling card. Uh, it just makes it all neat and tidy. Um, if you were mounting that directly onto a book, of course, you wouldn't necessarily need to put the card on. You could just glue it straight down. That's just ordinary card, um, some glue, uh, and there we go. That's a sort of a journaling card. Uh, so what we're going to do is use a sponge, get some silver paint, and just cover it. Don't have to be too fussy, too carried away, but just make sure that we're pretty much covering all of it, including the back of the deco part. See that paint went nowhere at all. That's too mean with me paint. Barely got going and I ran out. The, even over the back of the decoupage, just everywhere. Just get it on there. Uh, it's like a, 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 a top coat, which is what we're doing, I guess, but it, ultimately it's the, the back layer. give this two coats if you want. It depends how patchy it is. I mean it'll look like it's fairly well covered but actually once you hold it up to the light um, you'll see that there is voids and things. If you line it in card it matters not in the slightest um, and that's most likely your, your use for it is to make a, a, a very robust journaling card um, but it make a very nice journal cover as well but again the size you can go down as small or as big as you want. I've just done it this size really so that uh, you can see the see the process and, and what's going on. Uh, let me find something just to hold that down. Well I just finish off that corner. I'll go again. Any areas that look like they might be a bit thin. And once we finish this, we should leave it to dry 
uh, and I'll come back and show you the finished result. We don't get the big reveal until this is dry of course. That's the joy of this. I like things when the results can be unpredictable. Uh, so that's that. I'm going to leave that to dry now. Now the, the other one uh, that we're doing with the skulls, that um, crackle paste is going to take longer to dry than I thought, uh, mainly because it's on acetate and of course it's not uh, absorbing into the paper at all. Uh, it's just sitting on top. So what I'll do is I'll let this one dry, come back and show you, and then what I'll do is tomorrow I'll do part two and we'll get back to that one when it's fully dried um, because if I try and do it, well it isn't, the crackle paste definitely won't work and that would be a shame. So I'll, I'll just pause you there for two seconds of your time, slightly longer for mine. Once that's dry, we'll flip it over and have a look what we've achieved. See you soon. Welcome back. I've given that a little while. I've given it a bit waft over. Uh, hopefully it's dry enough to handle. It's not 100% dry, but you know, time's of the essence. Uh, so what we now need to do is to turn that over and see what the end result is. I'll get a clean bit of paper so that we can put it over, turn it over and put it against so we can see. And here we go. Ooh, the big reveal. Ooh, there we go. That's what that looks like. Uh, and now you can see with the uh, the silver, it sort of makes that that blue and the black make more sense. Uh, there's the shine off the acetate because this side, of course, is perfectly smooth and shiny and flat. Uh, and there's the hydrangea in the middle the black stencil in, the blue that we'd lightly sponged over uh, and then a, a solid silver background which really you know makes it makes it come to life I think anyway uh, so that really is is the technique uh, there's the back as you can see uh, if I hold it up there you can see this this even though you think that you've covered it in totally in silver there is spaces in it um, which is great so that when you if you back that with uh, cream card or white card uh, to turn it into a journaling card it, it'll add to the front as well uh, so that's why we sponge because really they, they, we want those voids because um, it helps with the overall look and there we go that's how we do that which is decorating the reverse side of an acetate sheet. Uh, there is a, a French word, fancy word for it, if you're doing it on glass, which is very eglamise. There we go. Sorry for the accent and the pronunciation. I'm sure it sounds nothing like that, but that is the word for it when you do gilding, etc., on the back of glass. Uh, and I hope you've given it a go. Uh, it's most enjoyable. You just have to. Bear in mind you're doing everything in reverse uh, and upside down, um, but the, the the effect is 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 very attractive, I think. Now the other one that we were doing the skull, as I mentioned before, I'm going to have to leave that overnight, I think, for the crackle paste to dry. Um, we'll let that dry fully, then we'll come back and we'll finish that one off uh, and see whether it works. Uh, and I'll do that as a, a part two video and I'll do that tomorrow uh, to keep you entertained tomorrow. Miss P will be back tomorrow with day 17 of the September Daily uh, and hope you can join us then for that video. Take care out there. See you all soon uh, and you'll see me tomorrow. Well, at least me hands. Um, and stay safe. Bye.